Where the wife has the desire for sex, the man doesn't, and it's the same situation just in reverse. Happens all the time. And so what happens is, the person who's doing it out of duty and obligation because there's issues that haven't been resolved, what it does is like, I think T.D. Jakes once said that sexuality without intimacy feels like rape. Yes. And oftentimes a lot of us feel raped in our marriage because there's nothing but hard penetration and no emotional connection. I mean, you might as, it's just like a prostitute John experience. It's just sex. It, that's all it is. And what happens is, what's so deep? Because I wrote a book, a powerful book, dealing with sexuality, and I remember interviewing and doing research on <coughs> prostitutes and strippers, as an example. And strippers would say that they, the more that they would have to perform and entertain for their clients, the more they began to hate men. And so a lot of strippers wanted to become a lesbian because of the hatred that they had for men because they were, they were treated as nothing but physical objects. And when you are participating in duty sex, you kind of feel like an object because you're emotionally disconnected. So not only is she not satisfied, <coughs> and it draws us further away emotionally, the man is not satisfied because he's not ultimately getting the experience that he wants. And so many men have said, I'd rather masturbate than have duty sex, because I'm getting absolutely nothing out of that. And a lot of times, couples fall into that sexual pattern. Then you have what is called old shoe sex. <laughs> old shoe sex. You can relate. Don't raise your hands. <laughs> so this is where I was talking about how monogamy oftentimes results in monotony, because the reason why you were so passionate, enjoyed sex in the very beginning, because it was new. You didn't know what to expect. You didn't know what to anticipate. But just like in communication, I can finish your sentence before you start, and I already know where you're going, I know what you're thinking. The same type of predictability takes place even in our sexuality. I already know the three positions we're going to do. I already know. I already know before it even starts how it's going to wind up. I know he's going to touch this and rub that, and she's going to do this and do that. Right? So it's already prescriptive. <laughs> Because all of us operate in patterns. And so all of a sudden, sex now becomes boring. It becomes boring. It becomes like that, oh, shoot. Who likes women? Let me ask women. How many, how, how many pairs, is, if somebody could just be transparent, how many, how, do women love buying shoes? Yeah. Yes. Now, you may have a closet full of shoes. You may have 20, 30, 40, 50 pairs of shoes. But every time you go shopping, you've got to get you a new pair of shoes. True or not true? Oh, Why is that important to women? <laughs> what is it about shoes that are important to women? That's not a rhetorical question. It changes so. the whole outfit. Yeah. Yeah. You can wear the same thing every day with a different pair of spices shoes. Up. Be yeah. and it spices up your outfit, too. Spices up the outfit. And a purse. New out and a purse. Don't forget the purse. <laughs> Fresh, freshness. Right? Freshness. Okay. Now, the same shoes you have in the closet when you say, I have nothing to put on my feet. All those shoes you have in the closet, technically, you could put on and get from point A to point B, right? So it works, but you want something new and different. Well, what makes sex any different? You want newness in your relationship. And a lot of times when you think about men and women, you know, men and women either want more sex or better sex. And because our sex isn't getting better, it's becoming predictable, it's become stale, it's become trite. I know where you're going before we get there. Old shoe sex. So the key to solving this issue of old shoe sex is to discover different ways of expressing yourself sexually, okay? Getting beyond the Christian missionary position, because I know that's all we're taught to do, the missionary position, but there are more positions than just that. There's more things to do than just that. So what we do as Couples Academy, every single year we have something called Seven Days of Extraordinary Sex. It's the Seven Days of Extraordinary Sex Challenge, and we have couples from all over the country that sign up, and on, on each day, we give them instructions of what to do for that day. All right? So we have a manual, and we have videos that we create, and we're guiding them through the process. And you will be amazed how it's transforming couples' relationships. So we have uh, wives take the lead sex. That may be day one. 
Because for a lot of couples, maybe the man is the one who typically initiates, right? And, and let me ask the question, how many men in the room would love for their wife to initiate sex? Yes. It's quiet, but I do see hands. <laughs> that is important to a man because he feels desire. Just like you have an emotional need to feel desire, and you want to be told that you're beautiful, and that you have a great body, and you look good in that outfit, and he comes on to you, men have that need and desire as well. So the, the misconception is that women are more emotional than men, so they need more. Well, the reality is, is that men and women have the same number of emotions, but we express them differently. And we express them differently because of society. We've been, been indoctrinated and socialized to express our emotions in a particular way, but if the truth be told, men desire it just as much as you. So initiating, right, is a wonderful thing.